Dr. Karen Beeler is one of the founding faculty members of UNBC, as well as the Department Chair of English in the Faculty of Indigenous Studies, Social Sciences and Humanities and Gender Studies. Welcome, Dr. Karen Beeler. Let's get to know your spicy mind. How would you like me to address you? I am Sharon and I prefer she, her pronouns. You can address me as Karen with she, her pronouns as well. Where did you grow up? Tell me about your hometown. Well, I grew up in Vancouver, BC. Grew up in a very different Vancouver because of course it's, it's grown and uh, things were much more affordable in Vancouver when I grew up there. My degree was um, at uh, UBC, my, an undergraduate degree in English. Okay, thank you. So if you are ready, we're going to taste our first hot sauce. So okay. we'll start with the one at the far end. Okay. So you can just rip off a little piece of bannock. This is and, a peanutty sauce. Oh, that sounds good. I do enjoy um, peanut satay. So. The bannock is really good too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's manageable. <laughs> yes. Okay, so now that you have peanut butter mouth, mm -hmm. can you please tell me about the three most influential people in your life? and how they have impacted you. Only three, <laughs> that's really difficult. Well, I mean, I think maybe most people would, would say their parents um, because I think I was fortunate to be able to grow up in Canada since I'm the child of European immigrants uh, who immigrated here in the 1950s. It's because of that choice that they made that I was, I consider myself uh, privileged and was able to go on and do post-secondary studies and have had a, a very good life here in, in Canada. So I guess I'll say, you know, my, my parents is one unit in that sense. Second person, it's really difficult because I've had so many educators in my life. And so I think, you know, they were very, very influential that way. Professor at, at UBC, probably Dr. Herbert Rosengarten. And he, he was, uh, I think, the, one of the undergraduate supervisors um, in the English department at UBC. He was a very supportive person in many ways, not just uh, for students or academics, but he was a very kind person. I could see that, you know, he would talk to people who were working outside of the academic context. Just a great way to be, to, you know, not be arrogant in, mm -hmm. in your position. And obviously had, he had many accolades, but he was able to speak to everyone and was very kind. And I also was able to get my first job as a tutor, tutoring students, English as a second language students over the summer. So that was my first summer job. A third person, Cassie Young, who has run a, a dog training facility and really started up canine nose work and sent work in, in Prince George. You know, she, she started this business on her own. It was obviously not an easy thing to do, but I think just the way she worked with, with animals, with um, so many different people, and again, was very supportive and kind, and really allowed us to see how we should interact with, with our animals, not think about prizes and competitions so much, but just work you know, in a very step-by-step -step way and have very modest aspirations initially for each of our dogs that we were working with. Okay, are you ready yeah. for another sauce? And it's made with lots of root vegetables. Um, to me, it reminds me of like a really, really great gazpacho or root vegetable soup. The unicorn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is kind of a, a soup mm -hmm. flavor to it. It's something yeah. I would expect in a soup. And, and it's got a little bit, bit of a kick to it. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to get a little bit more existential. If you could go back and give your 16-year-old self mm -hmm. one piece of advice, what would it be? That's really difficult because that is such a transitional time in one's life when one is really trying to think more in terms of adult activities. Relax a little bit more. Try to appreciate those friendships. Are you ready for our next one? I am ready for the so, third one. You mean a little gold flex? It actually flex? has a little bit of gold leaf in it. Oh my goodness, it must be expensive. <laughs> it is delicious. I like to think of it almost as a little bit of a spicy hollandaise. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, that would work with a salad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The theme of being a little bit existential, talking about yourself. Mm -hmm. If you were a color right now in this moment, what color would you be and why? I'm going to say purple because it seems to have a bit more personality to it. <laughs> and I'm hoping I can inject some personality into this interview. I'm going to say, yeah, I'll go with the funky purple. So are you ready for your next sauce? I am. And okay. this is going by very quickly. It does, actually. <laughs>
So this next sauce has more jalapeno in it, mm -hmm. in the flavor, the green one there. Great. A little bit more heat on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely would, would work well with, um, with lots of Mexican cuisines, I think. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's still tasty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our next question is our rapid fire question. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking you seven questions. If you could please answer them as quickly as you can with one word answers if possible. Okay, that's very difficult for somebody with a background in literary studies and <laughs> who doesn't do multiple choice well. So, uh, What is your pet peeve? Typos. What is your favorite word? However. What is your least favorite word? It's actually kind of two of that. I could say that. Going forward. Can you name a four-letter word that starts with the letter B? Basque. I should bask in the sun. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? Lisa. And what is your favorite pet? A dog. Have you ever worn socks with sandals? It depends. Do flip-flops count? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. So are you ready for another sauce? I am. We're up to number five already. We are wow. up to number five. So it's the orange one in between the green ones there. Okay. And what kind is this? This one is habanero curry with a little bit of orange. Kind of sneaks up yeah. on you afterwards, though? Yeah. Yeah. But it's still, they're, they're all really good sauces and they go with so many different things. Talk a little bit more professionally. And what is your favorite thing about Northern British Columbia? My favorite thing about Northern British Columbia, it's hard to limit it to, to one thing, but mm -hmm. I would say, you know, after being an urban dweller of Vancouver, right, for so many years and living in other uh, larger s cities where I did my studies, I would say just, you know, the, the space and just the smaller, uh, community feel that you get in Prince George, even though it's considered a city hub and um, the center for the north, it still has a very uh, comfortable feeling about it. It's very nice actually to feel that you can make a difference in a mm -hmm. community this size. Number six. So this is the next green one. It's very different than the first green one in flavor though. It's different. It mm -hmm. is, like you say, jalapeno, but kind of... Um, yeah. Almost pickly? Yeah. Tell me about your field or fields of study or what you're working on these. My field of study, it, it really has changed over the years, mm -hmm. although I, I started out as a person who worked in the field of literary studies because I completed a degree in English literature at mm -hmm. UBC, and then I went on to do an MA and a PhD at the University of Alberta where I took comparative literary studies or comparative literature as it was called. The comparative literary studies really um, allowed me to look at relationships between different cultures and between uh, literature and, and other media. So I really found I was able to expand my interests. As, as an undergraduate, I was always interested in learning other languages, looking at connections uh, between texts across cultures, uh, which, you know, I felt a little bit more limited with the, the English literature. So because I was taking la other languages, French and German at UBC, I also wanted to explore some of these other cultures. And then over the years, I've kind of taken those comparative literary studies and, and connected them more to film, film studies. So I, I teach and publish in film studies and television studies now. But I also look at film adaptation. So I haven't lost the literary text and many of the analytical skills you have when you read a, a novel or a work of poetry, you can still apply to another medium like film because it, you know they tell, films tell stories and it's the narrative that, that interests me predominantly. So um, focusing more on sort of narrative that way than lyric poetry film studies, but I think my comparative literary studies are still part of that because I do look at adaptations as well. Well, the next question might tie into that. Mm -hmm. um, so are you ready for another sauce? Ah, oh, they are getting more potent. They are. <laughs> so I may not so be this, dipping as, as yeah. generously. So we're on to the next bright orange one here. Okay in front of the tall bottle. More along the lines of kind of that Tabasco sauce style, yeah. I think, yeah, with maybe crossover to some barbecue sauces, but yeah, it, it's different. They're all very, very different and they go with. In today's world, why do you feel your field of study is important? I think that that is um, a really important question because of course, I work in the humanities, and people are always asking about the relevance of the humanities, particularly in today's you know, tech culture, and um, thinking about the types of 
you know, jobs you can get with a background in the arts, the humanities. And of course, I would say, you know, studies have shown when you dig a little bit deeper, you can see on the job market actually people with some more general skills and more flexibility in the kinds of skills they have um, are able to secure employment sometimes more easily than people with a highly uh, kind of focused skill, um, something that um, I don't really want to name other fields, but um, you know, if your area of study is so narrow, obviously um, things can change very easily and then you're kind of stuck and, and have to upgrade or go into another area of study. But with some of the general skills you acquire when you um, study um, in the arts or um, do a Bachelor of Arts degree or again, further study, you can move on to different fields. You don't have to become a professor of literature mm -hmm. or cultural studies or film studies professor. You can use those skills, those analytical skills, the um, ability to do presentations. We get many of our students to do presentations mm -hmm. um, because that's a, a skill that you can use in so many different situations, right? I mean, you can uh, be doing a presentation uh, at a board group. Um, to a board of a, a corporation, for example, that's important. If you work for the government and you know you've got to do <laughs> a PowerPoint and and have good communication skills, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's something that transfers very easily into all sorts of work. Mm -hmm. um, allows people to see how uh, these narrative texts can teach and delight. So you get both. You get kind of the educational aspect of of a film or a, a, a novel, as well as the aspect of that text that delights or brings brings pleasure, is entertaining, right? This is why people mm -hmm. often, you know, enjoy reading or going to movies because they see that part. But, you know, when we look at it in a in an institutional setting, we try to talk about various techniques and see that there's also kind of a system and a structure behind these marvelous works. And that it's really important to, you know, see that as well as enjoy it or see why you're enjoying this text or this movie so much that, yeah, there are certain, there's some design to it and people can appreciate that more when they look at camera angles and realize, yeah. ah, this low camera angle is making somebody look authoritative or important or heroic, mm -hmm. dare I say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, you know, those are some um, tools that people appreciate. And then beyond that, I would say that, you know, um, in this world where people are bogged down, different jobs, and just need some kind of release or relief at the end of the day, it's nice to uh, be able to look at a work of art, whether it's a painting, film, or listening to music. There's a healing power to that as well. And I think that's become more important, particularly over the last couple of years during the pandemic, when people really missed being able to go to entertainment events and you know take part in in these kinds of artistic ventures whether they're practitioners or uh, the audience okay are you ready for sauce number eight i'm afraid Wait, to say yes but it, uh, <laughs> i will the bottle looks a lot scarier than the uh -huh. sauces i find this to be very sauce. okay well i'm so. going to try this scary looking one yeah. um <laughs> i'm only dipping a, a little bit it's different. It's, I think it's probably for pe connoisseurs of hot sauce. It's really offering something different than the others. Yeah. yeah. What is one lesson that your field of study has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? We know there are multiple lessons that, that we learn um, no matter what kind of work we do. But whether you're doing literary analysis or um, film studies or television studies, the field has really taught me that it's important to slow down, collect your thoughts, take some time to, to explore the meaning mm -hmm. of things, um, whether they're, they're symbols or characters or looking for motivation of characters in a particular work. Just sort of taking the time to, to stop and, and analyze and look at these interesting depictions and look at the problems that artists can sometimes present and the fact that we can appreciate the imagery as well as the, the symbolism and we can escape uh, our real life for a while and immerse ourselves in these works of art. 
But at the same time, we can see how this work of art can kind of transform our experience, our real experience in a way, and sometimes taking us away from real life um, is important so that we can kind of get that distance and then kind of critique our real life. So you might watch a, a fantasy show or a show about vampires and you might see certain, certain relationships or certain actions in that vampire uh, film and ask yourself, um, well, why is this person engaging this extreme behavior or self-destructive behavior or examples of substance abuse? And then that has a message for contemporary culture as well, so that we can use these works of art and kind of reflect on our everyday experience. And um, that's what art kind of does. It sometimes sort of disconnects us from reality, but then reconnects us. Time for sauce nine. This one is a barbecue sauce. Okay, I think style. my chunks of bannock are getting larger and- <laughs> Your dips are getting my smaller. My dips are getting smaller, <laughs> yeah. And this is barbecue sauce, yeah. so which one is it there? Okay, that's quite tasty. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll come back and yeah. um, kick me in the throat or something. Just <laughs> I don't a little know. Bit. But it is, it's actually, yeah. And actually my tongue is stinging now, so. Yeah. But there you I go, think but it's we're up to number nine. We're doing pretty yeah. good. <laughs> what do you consider to be your greatest professional achievement? You know, I'd, I'd like to say being able to secure a, a continuing position at UNBC has been my greatest professional achievement. It was almost too good to be true, I have to say, when I saw the ad for a position, because a position I applied for said um, interest in any or all of the following, and it said comparative literature. Um, women's literature and First Nations literature. And I had two degrees in comparative literature and I had focused on women's experiences in, in literature and in, uh, my MA thesis and in other publications. And then I had also started um, working in the area of indigenous literature, just a, a little bit um, teaching works by Thomas King. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, wow, if I can't get this job, <laughs> I'm not gonna get a job <laughs> anywhere. And so it worked out very well. So yeah. I'm um, really happy that, yeah, that was for me, I think the, probably the greatest achievement because, you know, achieving the rank of full professor was pretty great. Are you ready for your last toss? <sighs> The grand finale. So this one is definitely the spiciest of mm -hmm. the sauces, yes. um, but it's very sweet. I can't see how much I've dunked. I think I may have taken too much, but well, that's okay. <laughs> okay I do have milk here, so the full taste experience. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I might need some milk for that one, okay. but. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So now that you've tasted our gauntlet of sauces from all over beautiful British Columbia. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you would like our viewers to know? Like what's next for you? Any special projects you come you have coming up? Or shameless self-plug? <laughs> Those are great too. Well, I don't want to turn this into a sales video, so I won't do too many <laughs> plugs, even though you know most of our books are purchased by academic libraries. So there's not a huge market for um, many of our, our publications. But still, I would just say I'm I'm really happy that I'm now at the stage where I can incorporate some of my hobbies into my academic work. And some people might say, well, why not, you know, keep those things separate, your hobbies from, from your professional interests and look more at uh, representations of animals in film and, and television and other short videos, online videos. Just published a book on animals and narrative film and, and television, and it's co-edited with uh, Stan Beeler. Uh, we've coll collaborated on, on a number of publications together. And so that's, that's very, been very rewarding. And we have a number of contributors who've been writing about different representations of animals and in, in film and television, um, narrative film and television, so fiction rather than documentary. Okay. So we're kind of looking at how these characters, animal characters, are used to talk about the intersectionality of class, race, gender, disability. And so we have really some wonderful um, contributions and it's just amazing different literary genres as well from horror, dogs and horror, oh to um, <laughs> rabbits and horror, and um, rabbits as antagonist figures, and then um, Japanese anime as well as um, some comedy and uh, 
animated film. Uh, so we have quite, uh, quite the interesting focus in that collection. So it's been very rewarding to um, look more at uh, animals because, of course, my hobby involves canine sports and I was um, on the board of the, or executive of the Prince George Kennel Club and I'm still involved in some of their activities and I've done different canine sports with my dogs, whether it's uh, canine nose work or scent work activities or rally obedience, canine parkour too. Oh, we did fun. that during the pandemic. <laughs> he actually um, earned a quarantine title because it was all done indoors on chairs and different obstacles that we set up. And then we, and then I was able to actually incorporate that into a publication. Um, the experience of doing this do-it-yourself kind of video, online video, bringing in canine activities during the pandemic during lockdown, two activities, so the canine performance activities during lockdown, as well as a community theater, because I'm also a member of a community theater group, the Nachaco Community Theatrics uh, Society. So I was able to write about the, that experience of community theater, virtual theater. We had various readings, children's book readings that we did, and some other kind of very short plays that we performed, one person plays that were performed <laughs> online with some interesting uh, backdrops. And, and so it was challenging, you know, because we really missed doing live theater mm -hmm. during the lockdown. And that was a way around it just to get people together, even though it was on uh, Zoom. So yeah, so that was also the other part of the article, just looking at these types of online experiences that we were able to create during the pandemic and then how it brought communities together, whether they're dog fanciers or was kind of the health benefits of doing this. Pug, it's called Old Dog, and it's a Canadian film, oddly enough, about a gentleman who is narrating the film and he's talking about his old pug. So I'm kind of full circle back to the pug, <laughs> pug image here. But, and I also happen to own a pug, uh, so I'm, I'm partial to this um, <laughs> film. But it's an old pug um, who has um, all of these um, health issues, right? Whether it is um, hearing and um, eye, impaired eyesight, and he's also incontinent, so he wears a doggy mm -hmm. diaper. But then we find out there's a connection to the other old dog, the, the old man, the narrator. And so again, the, by pairing these, um, the dog with the man, mm -hmm. um, I think the audience is able to see, you know, how um, disability is, and, and health issues are represented, but not in a, you know, sorrowful way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's talking about those, that connection and how there's a certain resilience that these mm -hmm. characters have. And hopefully that transfers over to, you know, real life for people watching these films. Wow. So, so I've really kind of gone from literary studies to <laughs> film television studies to issues of health now. Mm -hmm. And so I really feel my work is more interdisciplinary and it's mm -hmm. very rewarding. Well, thank you so much for coming in. I hope you have enjoyed your sauces today. I have. It was less painful than I thought it would be. It's quite enjoyable. Really oh, great good. flavors. I hope to be able to um, try them again. And, well, we yeah. have a little gift basket that we'll be giving you on the way out. Wow. Okay, so thank, thank you. you so much. And it was lovely to meet you. Thank you. Good to meet you, too. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm.